Welcome back. I'm Lance Legault. Nice to have you along for the Elvis 15th Anniversary Radio Tribute. Well, I got a walk way across town. She's a good to me. Oh, oh yeah. Say, I got a woman way across town. She's a good to me. Oh, oh, yeah. She says it's loving early in the morning just for me. Oh, oh, yeah. She says it's loving early in the morning just for me. There to love me both day and night. No grumbles or fusses, just treats me right. Never running in the streets, leaving me alone. She knows the warmest place. Her right for the night, I only got a home. Time. She's a good to me. Oh, oh, yeah. Say, I got a home. We're across town. She's a good to me. Oh, oh, yeah. But I think she's all right. She's all right, she's all right. I got a woman. So many hit recordings. Here's another big seller. You're a heartbreaker, you're a lovebreaker, a heartbreaker playing with fire. You're a tear snatcher, you're a quarrel patcher, but you can't break my heart anymore. For I have just found someone else who's sure to take your place. Someone I can always trust and fill this empty space. You're a heartbreaker, you're a love faker, but you can't break my heart anymore. You're a smooth talker, you're a real cool walker, but now you have talked out of her. You're a high-stepper, you're an eye-catcher, but you won't catch my glasses anymore. For I have just found someone else who's a sugar to take your place. Someone I can always trust and fill this empty space. You're a heartbreaker, you're a love-faker, but you can't break my heart anymore. But you can't break my heart anymore For I have just found someone else who's sure to take your place Someone I can always trust and fill the safety space You're a heartbreaker, you're a love-baker But you can't break my heart anymore By the summer of 1955, Tiny Sun Records in Memphis was not only the recording home of Elvis Presley, but several other up-and-coming rockabilly stars like Carl Perkins, Jerry Lee Lewis, and Johnny Cash. 
On December 2nd, Carl Perkins was in a recording session when Elvis, Johnny, and Jerry Lee dropped in to hear his new song. The four future music legends gathered around the piano for some impromptu jamming. Mostly, they sang the gospel tunes they'd all learned as boys. Luckily, a tape recorder captured some of that unrehearsed and momentous vocalizing. That unplanned session became known as the Million Dollar Quartet. Johnny Cash remembers that fateful day very well. Carl called me and told me this recording, asked me to come down. I came down, and Jerry walked in. They were all listening to Carl recording. Carl got kind of nervous, I guess, because Elvis was there. Everybody else was there watching him. He was recording, uh, Honey, Don't. We st he said, let's stop this session, just play some for the, for the fun of it. He said, let's sing some gospel songs. And Elvis sat down at the piano and started singing a Mahalia Jackson song, I believe. And we all tried to join in, and the ones that knew the words. They would go to that to a country gospel song, and Elvis knew them all. And uh, he was brought up on it. And he knew all the gospel songs. He'd do one after another. Then Jerry took over the piano, and uh, Elvis was really impressed with Jerry Lee Lewis's piano playing. We all were. We were all just knocked out by it. Elvis stayed there and uh, listened to Carl after we fooled around for about an hour. You know, there, back then there wasn't any cut and dried time for a session. You know, you went in and when you wanted to and stayed as long as you wanted to. And uh, nobody kept, and there was no clock in the studio. Carl went ahead and finished his session after that. And one morning they all drifted off. Well, I'm on a down on my bird. Down by the riverside, down by the riverside, down by the riverside, I'm on a lay down on my bird, down by the riverside, for no more. That's Elvis, along with Jerry Lee Lewis, Johnny Cash, and Carl Perkins as the Million Dollar Quartet. I'm Lance Legault, and we're coming right back. Elvis International Forum is a magazine that not only pays tribute to a man in his music, but gives you a chance to become involved in each issue. The man closest to Elvis, Joe Esposito, answers your personal questions. Special friends like Eddie Fidel, DJ Fontana, and others reveal stories about Elvis' personal life, his world, and his music. Elvis International Forum is packed with exclusive memories, stories, interviews, and rare photos. This special magazine will touch you deeply as we go behind the scenes and reveal the many sides of Elvis you just never knew. I've been an Elvis fan ever since I saw the movie Love Me Tender, and I wouldn't be without the Elvis International Forum magazine. It brings back all my fondest memories of Elvis. For information, write Elvis, Box 3373, Thousand Oaks, California, 91359. Never been down south too much. Some y'all never been down south too much. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a little story so you'll understand what I'm talking about. Down there we have a plant that grows out in the woods in the fields, and it looks something like a turnip green. Everybody calls it poke salad. Now that's poke salad. You used to know a girl lived down there, and she'd go out in the evenings and pick a mess of it, carry it home and cook it for supper, because that's about all they had to eat. But they did all right. Down in Louisiana, where the alligators grow so mean, lived a girl that I swear to the world made the alligators look tame. Oh, Saturday. Everybody said it was a shame Although the mama was a working on the chain gang A mean, vicious woman Every day before so 
summertime She'd go down and buy the truck patch And pick her a mess of old salad And carry it home in a toe sack Old salad hey. You got your granny Everybody said it was a shame Because the mama wasn't working on the chain game A wretched, spiteful Great raise a totem woman. Yeah. Lord have mercy. They sock a little pork salad to me. Daddy was lazy and no count Claimed he had a bad back All her brothers were fit for Stealing watermelons out of my truck Fast food salad, Annie You just got your bread Everybody said it was a shame Because her mama was working on the chain gang You suck a little pork salad to me. You know what needs to be a mess. Suck a little. Elvis' his longtime manager, Colonel Tom Parker. I think Presley was a star from the first day he ever started going into show business. I think anyone could have helped him that knows something about show business. Baby, all I want is all you got to run away. No, 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 no
Elvis started his career by getting airplay on country music radio stations. It was country music that he heard most as a child. Ironically, Elvis ended his career having most of his later songs reach the highest on the country charts. Country star T.G. Shepard first got to Elvis when he was a young man hanging out near the gates of Graceland. I was just a young kid. I'd been roller skating, and I walked out the door, and he had just gotten back from the service. And, and uh, he walked in, and, and he, he just he grabbed me by the shoulders, and he says, We need you. And I'm going, I'm in shock. I said, For what? He says, Well, we're going to play some kill. And I said, I never heard of it. He said, Suit him up. He would go through cycles of, in his life to where he would he would get hung up on things. And that lasted for like a year or two. And then he got into to other things like going to all-night movies and then going to the fairgrounds and riding rides all night long or going to, you know, just whatever. There's one thing he taught me. He said, uh, he said, my good friend, always remember one thing. He said, always be yourself because if you project an image that's not you, the people are going to love you for that image. And then someday when you want to be yourself, they won't let you because they'll be in love with the other person. One Night With You was first recorded in 1956 as an R&B hit for Smiley Lewis. Elvis liked the song and recorded it just as it was written, which was considered in bad taste, raunchy lyrics. So a month later, he returned to clean it up with more teen-oriented lyrics. But let us take a listen to Elvis's original version, One Night of Sin. Have a pencil ready. I'll be giving you an address shortly to receive a free Elvis memorabilia catalog. I'm Lance Legault, and we will continue. Here's that address I promised you to receive that free Elvis memorabilia catalog. Write Elvis. Post Office Box 3373, Thousand Oaks, California, 91359. I'd like to improve in an awful lot of ways. For one thing, the acting thing. And naturally, I try to get better songs and sing a little better, things like that.
Some guys fall in love with one girl, I gotta fall for two. There's just so much love in that one heart's supposed to do. So I go around with my heart dragging on the ground, dogging me around. I'm the sorriest sight in town. I got double trouble, I got double trouble, I got double trouble. Twice as much as anybody else, oh yeah. I guess there's gotta be two dark clouds hanging over me. My future looks as bumpy as a matchbox on the sea. Every time I think that I have finally got it made, some losing cards are played. I just can't make the grade. I got double trouble. I got double trouble. I got double trouble. Twice as much as anybody else. Oh yeah. I got double trouble. I got double trouble. I got double trouble. Twice as much as anybody else. Oh yeah. In 1957, Elvis went to work on his second motion picture, Loving You. During the shooting of the film, Paramount Studios was deluged with an average of 500 telephone calls a day for Elvis. <laughs> the mail department received over 2,000 pieces of mail each day addressed to him, and hundreds of teenage fans would line up at the studio gates to watch Elvis drive out in his white Eldorado Cadillac at the end of the day. Elvis's love interest in his second film was Dolores Hart. She had been a freshman at Marymount College in West Los Angeles when she was discovered and cast in Loving You. A Hollywood magazine tagged her as the most envied teenage girl of the year. I will spend my whole life through loving you, just loving you. Winter, summer, springtime too Loving you Loving you Makes no difference Where I go Or what I You know that I've always been loving you, just you. If I'm seen with someone new, don't be blue. I'll be faithful, I'll be true, always true, true to you, there is only one for me, and you By the summer of 1957, Elvis was on the cover of every movie and teen magazine in America. He was surprised to learn some of those magazines were drumming up a controversy between himself and Pat Boone. What's the Pat Boone situation with you? You know Pat. Well, uh, I know Pat very well. Uh, I didn't know anything about any, any 
anything like that except what I read in this radio TV mirror or whatever it is. Yeah. Well, they said uh, Presley and Boone battled it out. Well, they said that's, that's nothing. I mean, Pat Boone and I are very good friends. Elvis and Pat Boone remained good friends over the years. They certainly had a lot in common. Both were Southern boys raised on country and church music. They were both somewhat shy away from their performing careers, and both would play important roles in the early development of rock and roll music. Pat recalls his early impressions of Elvis. First time I actually saw Elvis Presley and actually appeared with him in Cleveland. There was a big disc jockey named uh, Bill Randall. At that time, he was considered one of the very top DJs in, in the country, and whenever he played a record or whenever he made a pronouncement you know, about what was going to happen, it usually did. So he told me when I came into Cleveland to be on this, uh, just a big record hop, a big fancy record hop, and in a documentary film that they were doing about a day in the life of Bill Randall, um, he told me that he had a new guy who was going to be on the show who was going to be the next biggest star in the country, a guy named Elvis Presley. And I said, you got to be kidding. I've seen records by that guy, Elvis Presley, on jukeboxes out in Texas, but he's a hillbilly singer. He says, now I know he sings country, but uh, he's got a new rock style and it's, he's going to be big. Take my word. Well, that night, we were backstage in this high school auditorium and, you know, a regular old uh, record hop. And I was waiting to go on and in walked this guy with a collar turned up and the long side burns and, and uh, a bunch of people with him. And so I knew who he was and I said, uh, hi, Elvis, I'm Pat Boone. He says, how about you? I said, really nice to see you. I've seen some of your records on some jukeboxes out in Texas. He said, oh, And I said, uh, well, that's great. Whatever. And uh, <laughs> he really, he was so shy that he just mumbled. You couldn't understand a thing he said. Bill Randall introduced him, and when he walked on stage, there was a big tumult, you know, because he, he had a look, you know. And he sang a couple of songs, and the crowd went nutty. And then he said something after about the second song. He said, oh, well, thank you, Elvis. Yeah, well, I'm going to do it next song. And, uh, and everything really calmed down, you know, I mean, like it sort of cooled everybody. But then he went into the next song, and he moved around a little, and he slapped that guitar, and everybody went crazy again. I thought, well, Bill probably knows what he's talking about. This guy's going to be big. <laughs> It's hard to believe anyone will ever come close to amassing the number of hits turned out by the king. I'm Lance Legault, and I'm coming right back with more. Anyway, I went into the Army in 19, 1958. I got drafted. I went to the Army for two years. I came out in 1960. Then I made some movies, you know, G.I. Blues and Blue Hawaii and several pictures that did very well for me. Thank you. 
Give us a room with a view of the beautiful Rhine Give us a room with a view of the beautiful Rhine Give me a money old creek in Texas or any old time I got those up, two, three, four, occupation G.I. Blue From a G.I. head to the heels of my G.I. shoes And if I don't go stateside soon, I'm gonna blow my fuse We'll get Hoss and Pfeffer and Black Pump a nickel for chow We get Hoss and Pfeffer and Black Pump a nickel for chow I blow my next month pay for a slice of a Texas cow We'd like to be heroes, but all that we do here is march We'd like to be heroes, but all that we do here is march And they don't give the purple heart for a falling arch I got the hub to For an occupation G.I. Blues From a G.I. head to the heels of my G.I. shoes And if I don't go stateside soon I'm gonna pull my fuse The frog lines are pretty as flowers But we can't make them pass The frog lines are pretty as flowers But we can't make them pass Cause they're always signs saying keep it to you off the grass I got the up, two, three, four, occupation G.I. Blues From my G.I. head to the heels of my G.I. shoes And if I don't go stateside soon, I'm gonna blow my fuse Occupation G.I. Blue Occupation G.I. Blue Ready. America's most popular music star was headed for a drastic cut in pay and a two-year hitch with Uncle Sam. On March 25, 1958, Elvis and 20 other Memphis inductees arrived at Fort Chaffee, Arkansas. As far as the Army was concerned, he was now Private E-1. Elvis Presley, serial number US 5331076. From Fort Chaffee, Elvis moved on to Fort Hood, Texas, where he received basic training and was assigned to A Company, 2nd Medium Tank Battalion, 2nd Armored Division. Eddie Fidel, who first met Elvis in 1956 when he was a DJ in Dallas, was very happy to learn that Elvis would be stationed at Fort Hood as it's only about 40 miles from his home. I said, well, this is great. I'll, I'll just go see and see if he remembers me now. Now, two years had lapsed, mind you, and I had not heard from him. I go up to the gate of, the, of this, this the largest military, I mean, armored division military base in the world, Fort Hood, Texas. So I, I go to the entrance of the, uh, the place, and I, I tell the officer that I came to see Elvis Presley. He said, yeah. He said, a lot of people want to see Elvis Presley. I said, yeah, but I know him. He's a friend of mine. And, he said, yeah, he's a good friend of everybody, and everybody knows him. I said, but let me show you something. I have proof that he's a friend of mine. And we had taken a picture in Fort Worth backstage, and I showed him the picture. He said, okay, and he wrote me out a pass, and then he directed me where to go. So I went to the day room of his division, and I went through the same routine with the sergeant of the day room. And finally, I showed him the picture. I said, see, I know him. Here I am standing right next to him. So uh, he said, well, I'll, I'll, let me see if he's in yet from the field. He said, I'll go see. You stay here. Don't leave the building. So he left, and he went, oh, about 100 yards maybe. So uh, I saw him starting back, and Elvis wasn't with him. I said, uh-oh, I guess Elvis isn't there yet. It's just a lost cause. And a few minutes later, after he got to the barracks, I saw Elvis trudging up this same pathway that the sergeant had. And no one could hold me after that. When I saw him, I just darted out and went and greeted him. Elvis just greeted him in open arms. And he, he just loved it. He just smiled from ear to ear. Elvis took Eddie Fidel up on his invitation and spent a lot of free weekends at the Fidel home during that first summer of military service. Yeah, but, yeah, but. 
You ever get? You ever get? You ever get one? You ever get one? You ever get one of them? Hey, did you ever get one of them days, boy? Did you ever get one of them days when nothing is right from morning till night? You ever get one of them days, boy? Did you ever get one of them days? Days, 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 days. You get up in the morning, you turn the shower on. Yeah. You get beat in your morning, yeah, the hot, hot water is gone. Freezing, sneezing, you wanna dry your back. Well, you ever get one of them days when there's no towel on the rack? Yeah, rack, 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 rack. You ever, you ever, you ever get? You ever get? You ever get one? You ever get one? You ever get one of them? You ever get one of them? Girl. Get one of them girls, boys. You ever get one of them girls who's awful nice with gold as I do? Ever get one of them girls, boys? You ever get one of them girls? Yeah, girls, 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 girls. You're at a driving movie. You're with a cute brunette. Yeah, I'm counting on the kisses that you figure to get. Closer, closer, then she hollers, "Whoa!" You ever get one of them girls who just wants to watch the show? Yeah, show, show. You're on a Sunday picnic, the wind it starts to pour. You run through paws and I have a scratch until you are sore. Ants come dancing, carry off the bread. Oh, you ever get one of them days when you should have stayed in bed? Yeah. Would you tell the folks your favorite movie star and the female sex? Oh well, uh, I like I like a lot of them, but I guess I like Kim Novak. Kim Novak. What about the male sex though? Well, I liked uh, Brando's acting and James Dean and Richard Woodmark. Quite a few of them I like. I noticed uh, in your write-up in Time magazine that you liked football a little bit. Would you tell the folks something about your football experience or just what position that you like to play best? Well, I played in for two years. I uh, never made real good at it, but I mean, I enjoyed playing. I know I'd go is maybe empty I'd be a millionaire My clothes may still be torn and tattered But in my heart I'd be a king Your love is all that ever
Elvis enjoyed the pleasures of incredible fame, and he also endured a personal tragedy that stayed with him all his life. We'll hear about it next as we continue. An international magazine that not only pays tribute to a man and his music, but gives you a chance to become involved. In each issue, the man closest to Elvis, Joe Esposito, answers your personal questions. Special friends like Eddie Fidel, DJ Fontana, and others reveal stories about Elvis's personal life, his world, and his music. Elvis International Forum is packed with exclusive memories, stories, interviews, and rare photos. Over 200 fan clubs from around the world contribute articles on what's happening now in the Elvis world. This special magazine will touch you deeply as we go behind the scenes and reveal the many sides of Elvis you just never knew. A one-year subscription to Elvis International Forum, four quarterly issues for just $19.95. If you love Elvis, you'll love this magazine. For information, write Elvis, Box 3373, Thousand Oaks, California. 91359. As a human being, really, has been extremely fortunate in so many ways, but uh, I've experienced a lot of the different phases in life. I've experienced happiness and loneliness and tragedy. Elvis had a very strong bond with his mother, Gladys Presley. He was a dutiful and loving son who delighted in sharing with her his wealth and fame. He bought her a mansion to live in and gave her a pink Cadillac to drive. When she died of an apparent heart attack at age 42, Elvis was overwhelmed with grief. And a valley 
Those who knew Elvis best said he was never more at peace than when singing a gospel song he'd learned as a boy. I'm Lance Legault, and we'll be right back with the Elvis 15th anniversary radio tribute. 